time to delete my whole music library. All right, here we go. Twenty years. Hundreds of hours. More tagging than a graffiti artist that's just had a flat white. Nothing has taken up more of my time than my DJ music library. And today, I'm going to delete all of it. It's become big, old and bloated. Like a retired sumo wrestler who's let themselves go. There are tracks in here I've never played. Genres that disgust me. And tags that I must have come up with when I was drunk. But there's a problem. In just one week, I have to live stream a DJ set for my Twitch audience with no backup. I'm going to be starting from scratch with no safety net. The stakes are high and this could go spectacularly wrong. So how did my library get to this state? I do a lot of my music discovery on Spotify. If I hear something I like, I drag it into a playlist. Every day, my Spotify playlists sync with Tidal so that I can use them in Rekordbox. I then analyze them, add tags and add hot cues. Fresh music all the time. Sounds great, right? Well, no. The problem is, tunes I like listening to don't always work well in a DJ set. My DJ library has become conflated with my listening library. That means I have hundreds, if not thousands of tracks I've never even played. The other issue is the lack of curation. Often, I only listen to the track once through. After that, it ends up in a playlist and ultimately my DJ library. This has resulted in a lot of fairly average tracks making their way in. I'm not saying every track has to be 10 out of 10, but there's a lot of sixes that have made it in there. Think back to when you were a baby. Your parents probably have loads of pictures of you happily eating stuff like broccoli or Brussels sprouts. But as you got older, you realise correctly that these are disgusting. Yeah. Music's kind of the same. I haven't played or listened to a dubstep track in about 10 years. So why do I have over 100 of them in my DJ library? It's time to give Skrillex a haircut, replace Knife Party with AMC, and send Dr. P back to med school. I've got more golden oldies in here than Midas's retirement home. Older tracks tend not to be mastered as well as newer tracks. This doesn't mean they're not still great tunes, but they're probably better saved for a classic set. It's time to give them a chessboard, lock the door and get them out of my sight. I've also changed as a DJ. When this library first started, I couldn't do anything more than a standard beat match transition, intro into outro. That meant I was limited to tracks that had nice long intros and nice long outros to give me time to beat match. They made it into the library, even if I didn't particularly love the tune. These days, I've got a few more tricks up my sleeve, which means I can be a lot more flexible with the tracks that I mix. I don't need to rely as much on these crutch tracks. I'm just getting set up right now for my final live stream with my entire library. After 20 years, it feels a bit sad to be getting rid of all these tunes, even though I don't know what most of them are. So today I'm just going to have some fun, play whatever I can dig out of there, before I delete the entire thing. If my tear ducts worked, I would be crying right now. Here we are going back in the nook. My final stream before I delete my record box library. Here we go. It's raining outside, it's a bit ominous. If I had the ability to sweat, I'd be salty as a pirate right now. Knowing record box, this could take about a week, isn't it? How long does 100% take? Come on. My whole library is gone. I got this live stream in about a week and my goal I think is probably gonna be to get around 100 tracks done. For now, I'm gonna keep it to just one genre and do drum and bass. Over time, I can add more to the library. If I'm going to start this all from scratch, I don't wanna look back in a year's time and find myself in the same position. I want to build my music library process on a strong foundation. I'm gonna split this approach into three different sections. The first is curation. How do tracks get in there in the first place? The second is metadata. How do I tag and identify my tracks? And the third is maintenance. How do I ensure my music library stays fresh? Like a bouncer at a club who doesn't let you in if you're wearing a cap. I need to create a robust barrier and system before tracks are allowed into my library. I'm still primarily going to be discovering my music through Spotify and then supplementing that with other sources like Beatport or SoundCloud. But first I need to detangle my casual listening from my DJ library. I've come up with an absolutely genius idea. I'm going to create a short list playlist. Any tracks I like on the first listen go in there. Each track then needs at least one more listen before it's allowed in my DJ library. If it doesn't pass, it stays in my listening library or it gets deleted. This is a bag of coffee. Everyone's got a different way of describing it. Chocolatey, the caffeinated tears of a commuter, the nectar from a unicorn's teat, a bag of coffee. All of these are valid, 
One of the first things I'm going to have to do is work out the way I describe music. That means I can create an effective tagging system and find tracks easily. Every DJ library needs constant pruning over time. It should never be static. That's why I need to create a way to get rid of tracks that have outstayed their welcome. I'm going to create a new tag in Rekordbox called If I play out a track and it doesn't work, I'm going to add this tag. I'm then going to set up a smart playlist that will pull in all tracks that have that tag and every so often I'm going to go through and just delete all of them. I don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater because that's a waste of water. There were some things about my library that worked well and I want to keep. I used to tag all my tracks by energy. It was one of the main ways I navigated and controlled the flow of my sets. I used these tags to create smart playlists in Rekordbox. For example, low energy drum and bass. This playlist was largely empty. And by the way, if you want to know how to do that, I'll pop a link to a video I did on tagging in the description. But I think this can work better. I used to have five categories, low, low medium, medium, high, and banger. But there were two problems with this system. The first is it was quite hard to decide between low and low medium. I felt like sometimes this meant tracks were getting misclassified. I also had like one low energy track in my entire collection, so it was a bit pointless. The second problem is to see what energy level a track had, I had to have either the tags sidebar open or add the my tags column to the playlist, which was pretty messy. It also didn't work great when I was on CDJs. The tags on there are not immediately available and are hidden behind a whole bunch of submenus. I've spoken to a few other DJs and quite a lot of them hijack the ratings field to indicate energy, with lower energy being one star and high energy being five. This looks a lot nicer visually in Rekordbox and makes it more of a sliding scale. It also plays nicer with older CDJs DJs like the 2000 Nexus 2s. The next thing I want to keep is subgenres. I mainly mix drum and bass these days, and one of my favourite things about it is you can play the entire spectrum in one set, from sultry liquid vibes to balls out neuro, and this for me makes subgenres quite a useful way of identifying tracks. They're gonna stay. The final tag I found useful was whether a track had a vocal or not. Sometimes people just like a sing-along. It was also a useful flag for me that there might be some harmonic mixing considerations, or some fun stems opportunities. Vocals is in, but on the flip side there were some things that didn't work so well. Originally I thought it'd be interesting to tag the individual elements present in a track. For example if it had a saxophone, a bongo or an 808 riff. The idea was it could be a secondary way of tying two different tracks together when I'm mixing them. If I was spending a lot of time crafting mixes for SoundCloud then this might be useful, but day to day it didn't really fit my mixing style and I never used it. It also took a lot of time to tag properly and I'm a very lazy man. This section is gone. I don't want to over complicate the first iteration of the library. I'm going to keep it simple at first and add more over time if I find that I need it. For now we're going to start with energy rating, subgenre and vocal. So we're about 48 hours from the stream now and I wanted to give you a bit of an update on my progress. I've made none, but on the plus side, I did finish season one of Narcos. Now the pressure is really on. I'm gonna to have to spend tonight shortlisting some tracks and then tomorrow I'm gonna to blast through as many as I can, add cue points, analyze them, tag them, and then hope for the best. But I do have season two to watch. So I'm just getting set up for the stream right now. We're gonna be live in about 25 minutes. I only managed to process about 80 tracks. I'm a bit worried because I could easily get through that in an hour. I'm also not really sure who's going to show up. It's been a while since I've streamed, so I guess we'll see what happens. Okay, the stream's just wrapped up. That was super fun, but there are a few things that didn't work quite as well as I'd hoped. So I'm gonna get some sleep and I'll catch up with you in the morning. Okay, we got through it. Let's talk about what didn't go so well first. It was pretty hairy at the end. I almost ran out of tracks. I'd say after about two hours, I'd probably use 90%. By the end, my choices were pretty limited. Another issue was not having enough tracks to choose from that were in the same key as the one I was playing. This didn't matter so much with rollers or jump up where it's about quick cuts, but when I was playing Liquid, which is a lot more harmonic, it was a bit of an issue. The good thing is, I think both of these things should get better as the library grows again. Now some of the positives. In some ways, having fewer tracks was actually a positive thing. 
and then I was being a lot more intentional about what I was playing next. And I let the tracks ride a lot longer than I would usually. I think this made the set a lot more cohesive. And to be honest, it was kind of nice hearing a bit more of the tunes. However, because I'm mixing drum and bass, I missed having options for double drops. Sometimes I like to just drop in a 10 second riff from a track. Because that would use one of my precious 80 tunes, I couldn't really do this. Again, this should get better as the library grows. I also really like the simplicity of the tagging system. I didn't have a hundred things to consider when I was choosing a track. It was purely just subgenre energy and literally remembering what the track was in the first place. I'm a big fan of the star rating for energy as well. It was a lot more visual and therefore faster than the tagging system I had in place before. Interestingly, I didn't notice a single track while I was playing. I think that's because the overall quality of the library had improved. So is this something you should do? If you're a wedding or event DJ, probably a bad idea. By definition, you need a large and varied library, and it's less about whether you personally like the tracks or not. But one thing that might be worth taking away is how you categorize and find your tracks. Especially when you're getting requests, it's important to be able to find things really quickly. If you're a club DJ who relies on having the freshest tracks, then this could be worth exploring a bit. Constant curation of your library is something you should be doing anyway. So even if you don't wipe everything like I did, have a think about your library maintenance and curation process. If you're a hobbyist, have a look at those zero play tracks. Why haven't you played them? Is there stuff in your library you just don't like anymore? And are the tracks you do have varied enough to keep you interested and growing as a DJ? There was no way I'd have been able to prepare those 80 tracks without the record box cheat codes I use to speed up setting hot cues, grids and more. If you want to learn them too, then you should check out this video next where I show you how to set up an entire set in three minutes.